Hello, welcome to Bookspin. Today we're looking at Airside. This is a new release by Christopher Priest. In fact, the actual publication date is the 25th of May. So many thanks to the publisher, Orion, for sending me this pre-release copy. Now, Christopher Priest is a writer with a reputation for being a very talented novelist in the fields of both uh, literary fiction and science fiction. But I must admit, I'm not very familiar with his work. And I would say this book is more on the literary side rather than the SF side. But there are definitely speculative elements to the story. And at its heart, this book is a mystery novel with elements of historical fiction, crime fiction, and speculative fiction. It's perhaps not the kind of thing that I would usually choose to read, but I definitely enjoyed it. And I think that's largely down to the writing style and the feeling that this book evoked when I was reading it. So I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. And the premise of this mystery is very neatly encapsulated, I think, on the front cover here, where it says, in 1949, Hollywood star Jeanette Marchand landed in London. No one ever saw her leave the airport. No one ever saw her again. So that's it. That is the mystery that gets introduced at the start of the story. Where did she go? What happened to her at the airport? Who was this mysterious other passenger who was traveling next to her? Did she get killed? Did she get kidnapped? These are the kind of questions that we have to ask. And there is a huge enigma surrounding her disappearance that gets more and more interesting as we learn more about her and her backstory and the personal crisis that she was going through at the time and the whole circumstance of her transatlantic flight. Now, the protagonist of this novel is a man called Justin. And when we're first introduced to him, he is a young film student in the 1960s. And he is fascinated with Jeanette Marchand and the whole mystery surrounding her disappearance. So while the case was officially closed in the 1950s and Jeanette was declared legally dead, Justin is determined to investigate this for himself and try and find some answers. But this turns out to be a lifelong project and the novel takes place over several decades of his life and during this time we we see his career progress and he becomes a renowned film critic. And there are also moments where the story jumps back in time and we explore some important moments in his childhood. And this whole story is embedded in real historical events with many references made to real life actors and movies from the golden age of Hollywood along with some other things like tragic plane crashes. And these historical references are blended seamlessly into the fictional narrative in such a way that it, it gives the story this kind of chilling sense of very similitude. And there are a few times where I felt the need to look things up because I wasn't sure if what I was reading was real or not. So there were several layers of mystery that are explored throughout the story. And these kind of implicitly bring to mind real world conspiracy theories, uh, especially, for example, those around Marilyn Monroe's death. And this is all tied together very nicely with Christopher Priest's very captivating uh, writing quality with wonderfully flowing prose, decent character development, and occasional deep dives into side topics. Uh, these are usually t to do with 
film history or aviation. And these side topics tend to take up whole chapters sometimes even. Um, and in some ways it's, it is a bit of a meandering novel because of this. And these sections take us out of the story, the central story, but I think they, they also add layers of historical context and mood to the narrative, and I think we have a richer story as a result. The other memorable thing about this book for me, I think, is uh, there's something very distinctive about the writing style, which is very chilling and unsettling. Some parts of it almost border on psychological horror, I would say, especially when the protagonist is faced with intensely stressful situations which feel both uncanny and true to life. So for example, Priest does an amazing job of capturing the profound sense of alienation that can be felt in airport terminals. The stress and the anxiety and the boredom that passengers often experience while waiting for a flight. And while I won't spoil anything, I'll just say that this concept is taken to the extreme in a really nightmarish way. And this was one of my favorite aspects of the book. It's uh, perhaps not the best book to read at an airport though. All in all, I would say this is a solid read. I definitely enjoyed it. This is well worth checking out if you're interested in some unsettling mystery fiction grounded in real historical events. I'm going to give this a score of four stars. And I do want to read some more of Christopher Priest's work. So please let me know in the comments if there are any other books that you think I should read next of his. Uh, I am planning to read Inverted World soon. This is one of his earlier novels and one of his most famous, it's ranked very highly. Okay, the next book will be decided by the book spinner. So let's see what it's gonna be. Wayfarer's Quartet. Right, so this is The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers, and it is the fourth and final book in the Wayfarer's series. I have enjoyed the series up to this point, so I'm sure I'll also enjoy this one. Let's have a quick look at the blurb. When a freak technological failure halts traffic to and from the planet Gora, Three strangers are thrown together unexpectedly with nothing to do but wait. Pei is a cargo runner at a personal crossroads, torn between her duty to her people and her duty to herself. Rulveg is an exiled artist with a deeply urgent and longed for family appointment to keep. Speaker has never been far from her twin, but must now endure the unendurable separation. Under the care of Olu, an enterprising alien, and Tupo, her occasionally helpful child. The trio are compelled to confront where they've been, where they might go, and what they might be to one another. Together, they will discover that even in the vastness of space, they are not alone. Great, I look forward to this, and I'll let you know what I think soon. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.